All right, so on the last example, um, what we're going to do is, again, now, the only thing that I've added today, which is the reason why I'm not spending the whole class period going over ex these examples, because basically, ladies and gentlemen, when you're solving a system of linear inequalities, all we're doing is just taking two inequalities and putting them on the same axis. So that's it. All right, so you guys have already had practice with graphing, already had practice with graphing inequalities. Now we're just going to put two of them on the same graph. So the first thing I think that's going to need some work, though, is rewriting this in slope-intercept form. So we've got to solve for y. So again, I subtract 4x. And I write negative 5y is greater than or equal to negative 4x minus 20. Is everybody OK with what I did there? I'm going to try to move through this one a little bit quicker. Good? Yes? Good. OK. Now divide by negative 5. And I have y is greater than or equal to 4 fifths x plus 4. Does everybody understand why I flipped the sign with that? I did that last class very dang. Yeah, so you have to flip this. You, I said flip the sign, but I just didn't do it. Yeah, so you have to flip the sign, right? Whenever you multiply or divide by a negative number, which I did exactly last class where I said the same thing, but I just didn't do it, you got to make sure you flip the sign, right? So it's, very, it's a very small little thing, but it changes your whole answer. So you got to be very careful, because you can see I make the mistake, but you guys will also make the mistake on your test. So be very, very careful that whenever you're multiplying and dividing, you make sure you flip that sign, OK? All right, so now let's go ahead and graph that. Again, just going through our steps, ladies and gentlemen, here is our y-intercept, which is the coordinate point 0, 4. So I go up to 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I make a nice big dot. My slope, again, is a fraction. The change in the y-coordinates is positive 4. So I go up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And my change in my x-coordinates is 5. So I go over 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Remember, you're going up 4 over 5 from your y-axis. Then I look at this. This is less than or equal to, so it's going to be a solid line. All right, and now we just need to use our test points. And again, based on Jordan, I will use again 0, 0, because my line does not go through 0, 0. So therefore, I plug in 0 in for y. Plug 0 in for y and 0 in for x. When doing that, I have 0 is less than or equal to 4. Now, in this case, you can see my test point is going to be true. So therefore, now I want to shade towards where it's true. Where the last example, it was false, so I shaded away. Now I'm going to shade towards it. But when I'm graphing two of them, this is just my personal um, kind of tip. I don't like to do the shading yet. I just like to do arrows until I have completed both of my graphs. So now I have to do x is greater or equal to negative 3. Um, and the best way, ladies and gentlemen, to do this would just think of this as x is equal to negative 3. So therefore, x is equal to negative 3 right here. Now, depending on any y value, x is always going to equal negative 3. So therefore, that produces a vertical line. And hopefully, in your guys' experience, when we are graphing these vertical and horizontal lines, yes, Lynette? What, this one? That's me graphing the second equation. You have to graph both equations. Yes, now we're graphing. Now, this is different, because now we're graphing two equations. That was the original problem. So I graph this one, and now I'm graphing this one. And the way I was explaining, x is greater than negative 3. If you guys remember, x is equal to negative 3. When graphing those, that just produces vertical lines, right? where y equals is going to produce horizontal lines. Um, and now we just need to, again, determine where should I shade, to the right or to the left. So again, we can use our test point, which here is 0, 0. I don't have a place to put the 0 for y, so I just put it in for x. And is 0 greater or equal to negative 3? Yes, that's true, so I shade this way. Now, the reason, ladies and gentlemen, why I did the arrows is because I only want you to shade where it's true for both equations, which you guys can see is only going to be in that region. It's true to the right of the line, and it's true below the line. right? See, this region is true for this equation or inequality, but it's not true for that inequality. This is true for this inequality, but it's not true for that. So you're only going to shade where it's true for both of them. OK? That's the only new tip. All right, so what you guys have in store, um, please note that